So today we're going to do lesson 2C, rearranging the simple interest formula. There are going to be times when you're going to have other pieces of information instead of the principal and the rate and the time. So sometimes you might have the amount of interest earned, for example. So we will be looking for different values in the formula. Now we're still going to be using the same formula, I equals PRT, or of course it's twin, I equals P. I n and that's for when you know the decimal instead of the instead of the percent doesn't make the slightest bit of difference which one you use but again on most formulas pages that I've seen from this er, from this book they use pin so whichever one you want where i is still the amount of interest earned or owed p is the principal rate is the percent Rated rate they're going to pay you, and T is the time in years. So, so be careful that you're looking for the time in years. Now, so all you need to know is to rearrange those is that the P and the R and the T are all connected with what operation? If they're all stacked together like that. That means they're all connected with multiplication. And we know that this thing is an equation. Every formula is an equation because it has the equal symbol. And that tells us we can rearrange it by simply doing the opposite. So what we're going to do is use the opposite operation to rearrange. The formula because if things are connected with multiplication then we can take them apart by using division now we only want one thing left over there so we're generally going to be dividing by two things two of those letters to move them and it's easier to do it here in the formula and manipulate the formula instead of putting in all the values and then doing the math that way. Anytime you're working with a formula, if you're going to be doing it this, if you're going to be doing it over and over, if you can change the formula to suit the question you're working with, that's a far better option than just plugging in all the numbers and then working with the numbers. You're going to make a lot fewer mistakes if you're dividing letters that don't change than if you're dividing with numbers that do. Does that make sense? So, let's just look at a couple of examples that of of ways you're going to rearrange it. So again, say we have I equals PRT, and we want to find P. So we're looking for the principal in this case. Well, that means that I want that P to be all by itself on one side. And then I can just plug in the numbers and do the math in my calculator. The P is not by itself right now. It's connected to the R and T with what operation? It's multiplication, right? And the opposite of multiply is divide. So we're simply going to divide by whatever we want to move. Now again, I'm trying to leave the P, so I'm going to divide by R and T. And whatever you do to one side, you just simply do the exact same thing to the other side. Over here, anything that's exactly the same will divide away. They really make a 1, but we don't need a 1 times P because that's still P. And you end up with P equals I over RT. Then you can just plug in the, num the numbers and find out what your principal amount would be. And again, it's the same process no matter which one of the, the values you're looking for, and it's not going to change. So let's say we want to find T. So how long did I leave that money invested to earn that particular amount of interest? Well, again, T is not by itself, but it's connected to these with the other pieces, the other letters with multiplication. So we'll take apart the multiplication by using division. We'll simply divide away the things we don't want and leave the thing we do. So the P and the R will divide away and we get I over PR equals T. And now when I plug in my values and do the math, it's going to be solved for T with the time period, which is what I wanted in the first place. Okay. Your only problem when you're dealing with these is make sure that you watch out for units. When you're finding interest, then the units are always simply a dollar amount. 
but this time it could be years, it could be a percentage, right? You're looking for a, a value and that's different from just a dollar amount. Another thing is that I've used R here. It might be more to the point to use I because you're going to have to convert your answer to a percent when you do this. Now, okay, so all you're going to do is rearrange the formula first, and there are only three combinations, or, and then you plug in the values and do the math. So the math stays the same, but you're going to have to use your, your calculator to do the mathematics when you're dividing. Now, the only issue you could have is if you have R and T in the bottom, that means R times T. So when you're entering this in your calculator, if you just put I divided by R times T, that's not going to give you the correct answer. Because this says do this division. But if you have I over RT, we want to divide by that whole product, that all that multiplication. So what kind of so in, instead what I have to do is you're going to have to use brackets to enclose to know that you're dividing by that entire product and not just by the R. Your calculator won't know unless you tell it. Okay? So that could catch you. Be careful when you're entering these things to use brackets if you have more than one letter in the bottom, one, more than one term. Okay? All right.